what an awesome God we serve. He's so good. You know, the devil we know is a liar. My asthma and COPD might be bothering me a little bit, but I'm still here. I can't hold that note as long as I used to, but at least I hold some. Let me tell you something. God touched me. I wrote it down at the kitchen table this morning. Everybody has a heartache. Everybody. So when life gives you lemons, and you will get some lemons, trust God, and he will show you how to make lemonade. Amen? Amen? You see, I'm sure that John Newton, who wrote The Amazing Grace, had some misery in his life wanting to do the right thing and it was eating at him to the point where he had to do a completely bow face you see the song says amazing grace God wants to use your misery I said, God wants to use your misery for ministry. So never think that you're alone. And we as Christians know that, right? You see, you can always remember to go where do you go? You go straight to the source for comfort. And he will never, never, never fail you. Uh, you all should know this. We learned this when we were kids. Psalms 23. It's David's writing. And he says, the Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. So when he says green pastures, that tell me that the grass is right. It's not dead. He leaves me beside of still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his, his, his name's sake. Huh? Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will what? Fear not evil. No evil. For you are with me. When I was a kid, they used to say, Thou are with me. But you, God, are with me. Oh, hallelujah. Thank you. Mm. Your rod and your staff, they should comfort me. And you prepare a table before me in the presence of all of that misery, enemies. Oh, Jesus. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely in goodness. Surely in goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. 
and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Forever. Oh, hallelujah. Forever. I don't care about misery. I tell you all the time, I don't care about cancer. Misery, you are a liar. You are a liar. Someone needs to know this. Oh, hallelujah. My God, my God, my God. As we go before God, remember, we can always go to the source. Always. He will never leave you or forsake you. Oh, God. Sometimes that misery tries to slip up on us. But thanks for being not only our God, oh, he, you are that elite, you are that bare aspirin, you are that everything that I need, God. And for that, I say thank you. And we know that we can do all things. I say it so many, 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 many times, God, that I know. You go, you're a healer. And we can go through any storm knowing that that light of yours and only yours is on the other side. And for that, we say thank you. We pray for this world, God. We pray for the homeless. Touch the needs of all God. Someone needs to know that your presence is all they have to do is raise their hand. You are right there. All they need to do is say, thank you, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. Thank God. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord.
If you know your God is worthy, give him all the glory, give him all the praise. I worship you, Lord. I worship you, God. You're worthy. You're worthy. I honor you, Lord. I bless your name. your name Jesus. Jesus we give you glory God we give you honor yes, Lord. Yes, God. we reverence you Lord yes, Lord. your Lord of Lord and yes, King of Kings God I magnify you Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord I can't stop praising you enough for all the things that you have done for us oh God the things that you have done for me Lord I give you glory and I give you honor God I stand in awe of you Lord God for you are a wonderful God you are faithful, God. You are a healer, God. You are a deliverer, oh God. You are a very present help, Lord. We thank you, Lord God. God, we look to you, the author and the finisher of our faith. You are the most high, God. You are the omnipotent one. You are all powerful, God. You are almighty, God. We thank you, Lord God, that you have thoughts of good and not evil, oh God, to bring us to an expected end, God. God, we thank you that no weapon formed against us will prosper, God. They may try to form, God, but your word says they will not prosper. God, for that we thank you, Lord. God, we bless your name, Jesus. We thank you, Lord God, that you are big enough, you are mighty enough, you are powerful enough, oh God, to watch over your word and see that it accomplished that which was sent out, God. And no devil in hell can wage war against it, for you are a mighty king, God. You are courtroom, God. You are a doctor. You are a physician, Lord. God, you never lost the case, God. You are an awesome God. You are a mighty God. We give you glory. We give you honor, Lord. We bless your name. We glorify you, God. You are worthy. 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 We bless your name, Jesus. We bless your name, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise you, Lord. You are your faithful God, yes, you are. Hallelujah, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. God, we honor you, Lord. We bless your name, Jesus. We thank you, God. You are good, God. And you're worthy to be praised, oh God. God, your ear is open to our cry. And we cry out unto thee this morning, God. Hear our prayer, oh God. Heal, oh God. Touch, Lord God. Touch, Lord. Restore, Lord God. Restore, Lord. God, save, Lord God. Save, Lord. Build up, oh God, those Hallelujah. that are torn down, Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. In the mighty name of Jesus, God. Thank you, Lord God. Put your loving arms of mercy around those that are breathing, God. Hallelujah, God. Father, we thank you, Lord. For a spirit of praise. Hallelujah, God. When we're feeling heavy, God. That we can put on a garment of praise and a spirit of heaviness, Lord. Hallelujah, God. Father, you are a good God. And we honor you this day. Yes, Lord. Yes. We thank you for the word. We thank you for the man of God. We thank you, Lord, that your word will fall on good grounds this morning, God. God, what is thief and the robber can't come in and steal it out of our hearts, oh God. Open up our hearts to receive it, oh God. Lord, help us to hide your word in our heart that we might not sin against thee, O oh Lord. 
Father, we thank you. God, we praise you. Thank you, oh God, for what you have done, what you are doing, and what you will do in the future. God, we give you glory, and we give you the honor. In the mighty name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, amen and amen. Hallelujah. If you love him, just raise your hand in that same silence. Jesus. Jesus. I will worship you forever and always. Yes, yes, yes. I yes. will worship Jesus. I will going to keep your promise. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, I know what the song says, but are you going to continue to worship him yeah. forever yeah. and always? Yeah. For what reason? Because he has done great things. Yeah. <laughs> like the song say, says, he keeps on doing Great things for who? For me. There's an old song, and, and kind of because we're going to be talking about the mind of Christ today, and there's a song I remember. It says, I have a mind to live for Jesus all of my days. That's one of my old ones right there. 
in the old saints, they had to endure so much. You know, we, we walk around, we talk about civil rights and this thing and the other and so on and so forth. But they had to believe God for the next piece of bread that came, that went on their table. They had to believe God to pay their bill. They had to believe God to keep their job. They had to believe God just to make ends meet so that they could take care of their family. They had to believe God just to survive, to go to work and come back home in one piece. So when I look at that, I can think about the fact of where we are today, and God keeps on doing great things. Every time I make a left turn in 2706 Capstone, I thank the Lord because he's a great God. Every time I can get out of the bed, turn to the left and put the left foot down on the floor without rolling over and falling on my face, God is doing great things in my life. Just to be able to go to sleep at night and kind of sleep all night long for four hours at the time. Wake up in my right mind. Still have activities of my limbs. Can hear the birds outside singing before I get out of the bed. Today I want to talk to you about the mind of Christ. The mind in the kingdom of God is something that we don't talk very much about. The Bible says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. And so, as we think, that's who we are. If you want to know who a person is, watch what they do. Or should I say, if you want to know how a person is thinking, watch what they do. It's amazing that people will say a lot of things, and they sound good. They will say a lot of things. And it will touch your heart. They say a lot of things. And it makes you feel good. And they sound believable. But at the end, they do just the opposite of what they say. And that tells me that there's a mind problem. They're, they're, there's, they're saying something, but they're not thinking. Their constant thinking is, their constant thinking pattern is, is not what they're saying. Because it's not, they're not doing what they say. And if you want to know the type of mind that we should have, we need to look at Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Philippians says, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. But, but before I get that, we're, we're not, I already know we're not going to finish this. Sometimes God will lay a word on my heart and, and it just develops as we move forward. You know, he'll give me a little bit this week, a little bit more next week, and a little bit more the next week. And that's why it's so important for all of us, even myself, and I do it that we listen to these messages to see what God is saying to us. Because it's so much in this message, it's so much in these messages that will help you to be a victorious believer, a victorious Christian. But you have to understand that we don't get all the word that we need when we hear it the first time. Because we don't have the capacity, neither do we have the illumination or the revelation inside of us to, to, to get the manifestation right away and get all of it. He, he speaks to us in part. He speaks to us a little bit here at a time. He speaks to us so that we can understand uh, a little bit here and a little bit there. And it's like a puzzle, putting the pieces of puzzle together. But one thing about it, once, you, once, he, once he reveals certain things to you, then, then you got that. And then you stay there and you wait till he reveals the next thing. And next thing you know, you got a whole piece. You got a whole puzzle. You got a whole picture. You got the whole situation that God has revealed to you. And you have it uh, inside of you to where you can walk in victory in a lot of areas of your life. Amen. So we want to under, want you to understand that Jesus is God and God is Jesus. You got God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit. God came to the earth in the person of Jesus Christ. And he came to act out in visible form God's purpose for humanity. God has us here for a reason and for purpose. 
and we don't have to have an excuse or we don't have any excuses as to what God wants us to do and how he wants us to do it because he sent Jesus here for an example and he wants us to look at Jesus and see what Jesus did and then pattern ourselves after him. And it's not something that's hard because when God saved us, he put his son Jesus on the inside of us. So he's telling us through his word what he wants us to do. And he's showing us through Jesus Christ being living. And when he lived on this earth, what he wants us to do, he has put Christ on the inside of us to help us to do what he wants us to do. We're in a win-win situation. But I stopped by to tell you that won't work if your mind is in the wrong place. As I stated, and you'll hear this in Wednesday Bible study, when we give our life to Christ, he comes in and he renews our spirit, man. We were a dead spirit, and our dead, our dead spirit is made alive by the Holy Spirit. God, the Holy Spirit that comes to live inside of us. And so spiritually, we are saved, but our soul is not saved. Your mind didn't get saved. Your will didn't get saved and your emotions didn't get saved. That's why Romans 10, 9, and 10, that's why Romans 12, 1 and 2, 2 says, Be not conformed and be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. Your mind has to be changed. That's why that's in there because it didn't get saved. It's got to be transformed. You still know how to hook, crook, lie, cheat, and all the other stuff that you used to do before you got saved. And the only thing that's going to help you with that is that you have got to develop and find out what the mind of Christ is. Christ came to live on this earth. He was born of a virgin Mary. He was born and he came down on this earth. So that he could be an example as to how we should live and how we should think. I want to submit to you that the reason why a lot of folks are doing what they're doing and wrong and, and they think they're right and they're sincerely wrong is because of the way that they think. Washington, D.C. is in a shamble because of the way a lot of people up there think. They're doing all of this, these, these things, and they're, 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 they're evil, and they're wicked, and they are antichrist. And, and you're trying to figure out why. It's because of the way that they think. Well, you say, well, I don't know how they think. Yes, you do. You know how they think because you see what they do. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, that's what he does. <laughs> I say, as a man thinketh in his heart... So is he. That's what he does. We know how Jesus was thinking because of what he did while he was on this earth. So don't tell me you know what to do. You telling me out of your mouth you know what to do. And you want me to think that you're thinking right, but you never do right. And the reason why you don't do right, because you're not thinking right. And the reason why you're not thinking right, because you have not examined the word of God to see that how Jesus thinks. That's why Philippians had to write, let this mind, allow this mind, permit this mind, give this mind permission to let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. But we got to know how Jesus, what kind of mind Jesus had. And so we must go to the scriptures. I like Timothy. It says, now, we, we, we said that God came to the earth in the person of Jesus Christ. So God was Jesus manifested in the flesh. That's why he called him Emmanuel, God with us. And so he came out. He came to act out in visible form God's purpose for, human, uh, for humanity. In 1 Timothy chapter 3, verse 16b, it says, in the Amplified, it says, he, talking about God was made visible in human flesh. He didn't leave us guessing. He came down here in human flesh. He said, this is what I want. Let me show you what I want. He came in human flesh, but he came justified and vindicated in the Holy Spirit. So don't get it twisted. Don't say just because he came in human flesh that he was flesh 
and he was sinful and he had lust and he had all this stuff. No, he was justified. He was vindicated in the Holy Spirit and he was seen by angels. While he was here, he preached among the nations. And while he was here, many believed on him in the world. And then he was taken up in glory. John, 1 John, well, John, regular John, St. John, chapter 1, verse 14. In the Amplified says, and the word, Christ, became flesh. He became human incarnated. Human incarnate and tabernacle that means fixed fixed his tent of flesh lived a while among us and John said and we actually saw his glory we saw his honor we saw his majesty he says such glory as an only begotten son receives from his father full of grace favor Love and kindness and truth. Isn't that something? That's what he demonstrated. Full of grace, favor, love and kindness and truth. For him to demonstrate all of that, I wonder what kind of mind did he have. Do you ever read in the Bible... So you have to be careful when you are important because being in a place of importance and influence and power and authority, sometimes it, it makes you go crazy. You ever see in the Bible where Jesus asked folk as he going around to heal them or they need something from him? Or they do something to him. You, you ever heard them ask him, do you know who I am? <laughs> but you see a lot of human people. You, you see a lot of influential folks. You, you, the first thing they do, especially when they're wrong, just as wrong as they could be, and you're correcting them, and they say, do you know who I am? We had an individual came in here years ago cutting up, said, do you know who I am? I said, I don't care who you are. You can't act like that in here. <laughs> so we must go to Philippians and see Jesus' mindset and his attitude. Philippians 2, 5 through 9 says, in the Amplified, says, let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you. What kind of mind should we have? We should have a mind that has the right attitude, the attitude that Jesus had, the purpose that Jesus had, and the humble mind that Jesus had. It says, let this same attitude and purpose and humble mind be in you, which was in Christ Jesus. Let him be your example in humility. If you want to know how you're to act and how you're to carry yourself, Look at Jesus and see how humble he was. See, we have nothing to be proud about in ourselves. We have to boast in the Lord. We have to thank God. We have to say, it is Christ Jesus on the inside of me. I do what I do because of God living on the inside of me, not because of my mom, my dad, my accomplishments, my giftings, my talent. That has nothing to do with it because if God takes my next breath, all of that would just fall to the ground. But we need to understand that we must be humble and have the same mindset and attitude that Jesus had. What? Who was him? Who was God? Who was Jesus? Verse, verse 6 says, who although being essentially one with God and in the form of God, that means possessing the fullness and the attributes which make God, God did not think this equality with God was a thing to be eagerly grasped or retain. Jesus did not walk around asking other people, do you know who I am? Do you know that I'm God, the creator of the universe? He didn't go there. He understood who he was. And like Spider-Man's uncle told him, with great power comes, comes great responsibility. 
Jesus understood that he had great power, but he also had great responsibility. Those of us who have the most influence and those of us who God is using to be powerful and have strength and authority. All that God has given to us, we have great responsibility and we have the responsibility to use it according to the will and the grace of God and the purposes of God. You want to know why you're still here on this earth and not gone to heaven? It's because God has a will and a purpose for your life and he ain't waiting on you to be waiting on him to get started. <laughs> I'm just waiting on God. God waiting on you. <laughs> you already know what to do. But what stops us sometimes is our thinking. See, to think in the flesh, to think worldly, is to think after the flesh. But to think spiritually, you're going to produce what the spirit produces. You're going to, we're going to produce we could tell where we're thinking and what our thoughts are based on what we produce. You could tell if somebody's in the flesh. Because all they do is talk about stuff and things and money and position and what they have and where they're going and where they've been and the fun they've had. Hollywood is just filled up with flesh. They should call it flesh wood. Because it's all about self. It's all about what I can do and what I, what I have. But God wants us to have the mind of Christ. You remember the Bible says, in Matthew, I think, 6.33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added. You can't, you can't seek the kingdom of God if you're not thinking about the kingdom of God. You can't seek the kingdom of God is all you're thinking about is, is the kingdom of the world. Amen. You see, this is, this is something we got to understand. And I, and I read this and I heard one of this, there was, there was a spiritual Christian writer wrote this. And I just want to say what he said. He said, look, the Bible says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added. He said, is our, the writer said, is our business, our business is to seek the kingdom. Everything you do, your mindset must be, I'm going to seek the kingdom in this. In this job, I'm going to seek the kingdom. See, when we, when we go to work, it's, it's about kingdom. It's, the job is a tool, but it's about kingdom. It's about somebody there needs to hear about God. They need to see how Jesus would do things. They need to be able to solve problems. They need to be able to overcome a lot of things that's going on in their life. So it's, it's our job to make sure that we seek the kingdom. When we go in the grocery store, it's about the kingdom. When we're, on the, when we're with our kids and they're in their sports arena, it's about the kingdom. When we talk to the teacher about our children, even though they're doing good or not doing well. It's about the kingdom. When we're in the neighborhood, it's about the kingdom. When we're driving and somebody is in front of us not driving right, it's about the kingdom. When we talk to our neighbors, it's about the kingdom. When we come up against stuff that just makes us angry and we can't hardly deal with it, it's about the kingdom. And to be about the kingdom, you got to be thinking right. So, so it's our job, our job is to seek the kingdom. But I don't want you to miss this second part, because this is very important. It is our business to seek the kingdom, but it's God's business to give us the things. Our business is to seek the kingdom of God. God's business is to add all the things and all these things. Somebody missed it. I might have to say it again. Baby, you got it twisted. 
you've been, you've been seeking all these things. And that's God's business. If you go ahead and do God's business, seek ye the kingdom, seek ye first the kingdom of God, that's our business, and he will do his business in all things. He'll, 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 he'll just, he'll just, he'll just, he'll, these things will come on you and overtake you. You'll be blessed in the city, blessed in the field, blessed in your going, blessed in your coming, blessed be the fruit of your womb, blessed in your basket, blessed in your barns. And it goes back to how you're thinking. See, I'm not in a situation in my thought life where I hope I will win. Or I think I will win. I know I will win. I know I'm going. I, I know. I, 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 I know. I know. See, if you don't know, that's why you, that's why you listen to the world, because you don't know. People tell me they know, but they, 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 they act like the world. Everything comes before God. Everything comes before kingdom. When they want to get something done, they figure out how they're going to do it in their own strength. They figure out how their funds are going to pay for it. They figure out how their talent and gifting is going to get them there. And if they don't have the talent and gifting, they will go pay money. They will sacrifice. They will go to school. They will do whatever it takes to get that extra, to get that degree so they can make that extra money so they can get that extra that they wanted. And they leave the kingdom of God undone. And they're doing the wrong business. And some people, it takes them all, listen to me carefully, some people, it take, it take them all their life to figure this out. Some people don't figure it out ever. Some people figure it out on a deathbed. Some people figure it out when they lose a child. Some people figure it out when they lose a marriage or relationship. Some people figure it out when their children grow up twisted. You're looking at some celebrity children, and we were seeing how they grew up twisted, and, 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 and it's all because the parents were not there, busy seeking things. You seek things so much so till you lose your own seed to the world, to the devil. Was it worth it? Was it worth that you did all of these things and you lose your family, you lose your children, you lose your husband, you lose your wife. Some of us, we running after money, we running after these jobs, all to learn that we get a pink slip. Even a job don't want us no more. That's how people go postal, too. They spend all of their time and energy and years serving these companies, and then the company... They want to upgrade and they want to change and they want to diversify and they give you a letter and say, we don't need you anymore. You the one helped them get to where they are. You got them to the position to where they can't diversify. And now they're telling you bye bye. And so now you want to go postal because you were in the you were doing the wrong business. Well, let's look at Jesus because we're moving through time here. Let's 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 look at these scriptures. The Bible says. Jesus, here in verse, verse 7, this is the mindset we got to have. See, here's the deal. Jesus had no doubt as to who he was, his essence, his being, his attributes, his character, the whole nine yards. There was no question as to who he was. He didn't come to earth trying to get folk to understand who he was. He came to earth to demonstrate and to help mankind get back to the Father. Get back to the kingdom. Get back in fellowship. Get back in relationship. Get saved. Get back to the original hour to repent. Go back to the top. Go back to... The, the reason why God created Adam and Eve in the first place. That's what Jesus came on this earth to do. 
But there's something he had to do. So you can't you can't help. You can't help and serve God with all that pride. You can't help and serve God while you're trying to ask folk, do you know who I am? You can't help and serve God and 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 be a, 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 a agent of change when you got all of this pride and all of this pomp and circumstance. And you got all of this stuff, you so proud. How you gonna help somebody and you too proud to help them? How you gonna bow down and help somebody and go into dungeons and help somebody when you too proud to go in the dungeon? You too proud to stoop down to help them. The Bible says in verse 7, says Jesus, but but stripped himself of all privileges and rightful dignity. Do you remember on the cross, when he was on the cross, it was a legion of angels was going to come rescue him? So y'all not going to do our, you're not going to crucify our Lord. And Jesus said, hold on, hold on. Forgive them. You don't know what they're doing. Matter of fact, I'm going to be three days and done anyway. I'm coming up out of here. <laughs> it's going to be over. That's what Easter is all about. <laughs> He laid down his life. Didn't nobody take his life. He laid it down. And so the Bible says he had the mindset to where he stripped himself of all his privileges and rightful dignity so that as to assume the guise or the appearance of a servant, a slave, in that he became like men, men and was born a human being. Remember, he appeared, his appearance was of a servant, a slave. And he became, I need you to look at the word, he became like men. He didn't become a man. You got to know he was like man. He was still God. He was still perfect. He was still sinless. He was spotless. He was pure. He was peaceable. He was righteous. Why did I emphasize like man? Because some people get it twisted. They say, well, Jesus was just a man. And some thought he was just a prophet. And he was just, uh, you know, just a religious leader. Baby, he was God. That's your problem. You looking at Jesus like he was just a man. He was like a man, but he was not a man. See, if he was... If he was a man, then what good would he be as it, as, it, as it relates to being on the inside of you? You got somebody on the inside of you that's just like you, limited in authority, limited in power, limited in resources, limited in essence. You don't need another man on the inside of you like that. You got enough of you. You need a Christ on the inside of you that's bigger than you. That's a deliverer. That has power and authority. And then it says, and after he had appeared in human form, he abased and humbled himself still further and carried his obedience to the extreme of death, even the death of the cross. Therefore, because he stooped so low. <laughs> Look, we're going to get, get, let me tell you something. You're going to get paid for being humble. We're going to get paid for being humble in this world, on this earth. We're going to be paid for, being, for, for, for submitting. We're going to be paid for the stuff that we deal with. We're going to be paid for coming off our high horse and letting God use us. We're going to be paid for being a servant. We're going to be, prayed, be paid for being uh, 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 slaves of Jesus Christ. How do I know? Because Jesus got paid and, and he's, on in, he's on the inside of us. Look what it says. It says, it says, therefore, because he stooped so low, God has highly exalted him and has freely bestowed on him the name that is above every name. So Jesus came and died and he was, you know, they, they, they treated him bad and they did all this stuff to him. But at the end, he was raised from the dead. At the end, 
He was highly exalted at the end. He had a name above every name. And the Bible goes on to say that at this name, it was so powerful that at his name, every knee would bow, every tongue would confess because he was so humble. In other words, he went back to being God. And that's why those of you who are at home that have the juice and the crackers, pray that you sanctify it, Father, in the name of Jesus. Sanctify the juice that it may represent the blood. And Father, sanctify the crackers that it may represent Jesus' body. And so that was the reason Jesus came to die on the cross so that we could have a right to the tree of life and so that we would see his life while he was here and take up his mind so that we could be his eyes and ears and ambassadors in the earth. Jesus, God didn't save us through his son Jesus for us to sit down and just have a ride, just ride through this life. This ain't no free, this is not a free ride. We're not our own. We were bought with a price. And so as you stand to your feet, when we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we continue to recognize and remember and instill in our spirit man that Jesus came to die for our sins. He rose again the third day so that we might live in that same spirit that raised up Jesus from the dead is working in us right now. Isn't that all right? So when Jesus was in the upper room with the disciples, he took the bread and he broke it and he said, this, is, this bread represents my body, which was broken for you. Take and eat all of it. He took the cup while he was talking and he said, this cup and this wine represents the New Testament in my blood. So take this and drink all of it. He did say that as often as we eat of this bread and drink of this cup, we show and demonstrate that he died and rose again until he comes back. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, God, we glorify your name. Thank you for giving us a mind to serve you. Thank you, Lord God, for helping us to realize and understand the mind of Christ. And that as we continue to have his mind, we will continue to be victorious in him. Lord, cause our minds, this fleshly mind, to be transformed. Those that walk in the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. They're thinking about the fleshly things all the time. But those that walk in the spirit do mind the things of the spirit. Help us on our daily journeys. Every day that we wake up, help us to be about your business. Help us, Lord God, to think. To think right. Lord God, to have a lifestyle of purity and peace. That we may demonstrate and be gentle and easily to be entreated and full of mercy, producing good fruits without partiality and without hypocrisy. Thank you, Lord God, for peace of mind. Lord, don't let our minds run away with us. Give us a, a spirit to gird up the loins of our mind. Give us a spirit that we will cast down all vain imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. Let this mind be in us, which was also in Christ Jesus. Lord, don't let us walk out of these doors and forget the word altogether. Walk out the doors and start fussing. Walk out the doors and in disagreement. Walk out the doors and can't get along. Walk out the doors mad. Lord, let the spirit of praise continue to flourish and move in our lives in our spirit, man, and wash our souls 
if we have a different attitude as to how we think, how we feel, and what we do. Lord, as we leave this mountain, but never from your presence, we pray that you would protect us and bring us back on the appointed time. Lord, I thank you for every individual here. I thank you, Lord God, for the praise team, for the musicians, for every technician, for every server, every, every individual that serve in this ministry. Pray, pray for leadership. <clears throat> pray for those, Lord God, that are having illnesses in their bodies, Lord God, that you would heal them in the name of Jesus. For Jesus, you were wounded <clears throat> for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon you, and, and by your stripes, we are healed. God, we thank you. Thank you for your healing power. Now, Lord God, I pray that our minds will allow us to receive your healing. Lord God, as we are being healed, help us to have the discipline to do what we need to do in these bodies. The bodies of the temple. Give us the resources, the mindset, the wherewithal, the discipline. To keep these bodies healthy. So we bind everything that should not be going into them. I bind and I curse bad habits. Bad diets. Bad food cravings. That work against this body. I bind it in the name of Jesus. I pray Lord God that you give some of us the strength to go home and clean out our refrigerator and our closets. Our pantries, Lord God. Get rid of that which is slowly killing us. No, we don't smoke, we don't drink, but there is some food in our house that's killing us just the same. Give us the authority, the power, the guts, the wherewithal. And Lord God, as we clean out, give us the wisdom to replace it with the right type of foods that's going to help us that's going to continue to heal us and give us strength in this natural body. Give us that mind, Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus. So as we leave this place, bring us back on the point of time. In Jesus' name, amen.